So one of the challenges I see with young programmers, early programmers, people new to programming, is with naming their variables. Um, and the problem is because when we go out and we look at examples, a lot of times we, we see this sort of thing, right? Our variables have been named X, Y, Z. Um, I always had a hard time with this personally. I never understood how you could add X and Y. They're letters, not numbers. It always really broke my head. Um, but uh, so that's what we, and, you know, we get this and then they'd run the example and you'd see, you know, X plus Y is three. And that seems intuitive at first glance until you get to two or three hundred lines of code. And all of a sudden you've got X's and Y's and Z's um, and none of them really mean anything. Um, so in this class, very, very important that we follow some very specific naming conventions I have. Um, the first thing is we need to follow good Python naming conventions, which is we don't start with numbers. So I couldn't say like 555 five, five number, right? That would be a very bad number. Uh, as you can see, Python turned red. It says, no, you can't name a variable with a number like that. Um, I also wouldn't start with an underscore because that might mean something. Um, and alternatively, I wouldn't want to use capital letters because that also might mean something specific. We have these, we, these different ways of looking at things in Python. Um, so what I would want is, is a very descriptive variable. And as a early programmer, I would encourage you to make them a little bit long. Right? One of the things that I see often, and certainly in my own work, is when I'm working on something new and I can't remember what something does, then the descriptions I give it may not mean anything. Like I say, well, okay, well, you can't, I can't call it X, so I'll call it X, S, X. I'll remember that. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, and then later it doesn't because it doesn't really mean anything. Or maybe I'll substitute things. Like I might, I might call it MPG. That's great. So um, that might be miles per gallon. Could be meters per gallon. It could be... Uh, I don't know, any number of things. Martian parent girls. I don't know. I, you know, you, the problem with this is outside of the context of your own knowledge, it may not mean much. And remember, it's not you creating your programs. It's, it's me. So you want me to know exactly what you mean. So if this were, let's just use miles per gallon. I would absolutely call it miles per gallon. Now I realize that takes a little bit more typing the first time, but after that it's going to autofill it anyway, right? So when I go down here, I say miles is going to automatically come up. So that's a really easy thing to remember. You'll also notice that I like using camel case. Camel case word simply means that the first letter of the first word is small. The first letter of each subsequent word is large with small. All right, you could also use, uh, this would be another standard camel, it's not camel case then, so let's call it uh, underscore words and put underscores between them, All right? And again, it doesn't matter how long it is because when I come over here, it's gonna autofill it anyway. So it makes my life pretty easy. Um, what I would not do is mix and match. I wouldn't use some camel case and some underscore. I would pick one or the other and stick with it. Um, it seems like camel case is more popular in Python, um, but I suppose that's an opinion. But you can see that if I give it meaningful, meaningful words, descriptions that make sense, um, then it's a lot easier. So maybe this is first number and this is second number, right? And if I could type a little bit better, this would go much faster, right? And I uh, come down here, of course, I change these to be first number, first number and second number. And now I've got something that's, that's honestly a little easier to debug, um, which as a learning student is important because now when you look through your code, you can very clearly see what the variable is supposed to be holding. And if that's not important enough to you, your teacher, me, can see very clearly what it's supposed to be holding. Um, and what we know for sure is that uh, if your code is easy for me to understand, um, I'm typically going to be pretty good about grading it. If I have to dig into your code and run it 200 times to figure out how and why it works, 
I'm going to find every single possible error along the way, right? So you want to make them really clear and easy for me to remember. And good naming is a great way to start that.